In 1848, President Abraham Lincoln visited the Niagara Falls, and he was so impressed by the beauty of this natural wonder that he wrote down some notes, including the following. When Columbus first sought this continent, when Christ suffered on the cross, when Moses led Israel through the Red Sea, nay, even when Adam first came from the hand of his Maker, then, as now, Niagara was roaring here. The eyes of that species of extinct giants, whose bones fill the mounds of America, have gazed on Niagara, as ours do now. During the 19th century, there were many accounts of unnaturally large skeletal remains discovered in the ancient burial mounds scattered across North America. Today, not a single news media has ever mentioned a thing about ancient giants or past discoveries. If a giant skeleton is discovered somewhere, it would most certainly be classified and hidden from the public. It wasn't like that in the 19th and early 20th century, though. Almost every year, there were at least a few newspaper headlines stating the discovery of ancient giant skeletons. It seemed to be quite normal to find bones of giants in America when the first settlers dug ancient mounds to prepare for roads, farms, and buildings. The New York Times, in particular, wrote many newspaper articles about the discoveries of giants. Let's read through some of them starting with this one titled, The Bones of a Giant Found, which was published on May 25, 1882, and reads, A skull of heroic size and singular formation has been discovered among the relics of the mound builders in the Red River Valley. The mound was 60 feet in diameter and 12 feet high. Near the center were found the bones of about a dozen men and women mixed with the bones of various animals. The skull in question was the only perfect one and near it were found some abnormally large body bones. The man who bore it was evidently a giant. A thorough investigation of the mound and its contents will be made by the Historical Society. Another newspaper from May 5, 1885 reads this. Last week, a small mound near Homer was opened by some schoolboys who found a skeleton. Today, a further search was made and several feet below the surface of the earth in a large vault with a stone floor and bark covering were found four huge skeletons, three being each over seven feet in length and the other eight. This article from the San Antonio Express is telling about a giant skull that is twice the size of a normal human. And there is also a picture. The article reads, Beach Giant Skull Unearthed by WPA Workers Near Victoria, believed to be largest ever found in the world. Normal head also found. That Texas had a giant in the beach in the long ago appears probable from the large skull recently unearthed on a mound in Victoria County believed to be the largest human skull ever found in the United States and probably in the world. Twice the size of the skull of a normal man, the fragments were dug up by W. Duffin, an archaeologist who is excavating the mound in Victoria County under a WPA project sponsored by the University of Texas. In the same mound and at the same level, a normal-sized skull was found. The pieces taken from the mound were reconstructed in the WPA laboratory under the supervision of physical anthropologists. A study is being made to determine whether the huge skull was that of a man belonging to a tribe of extraordinary large men, or whether the skull was that of an abnormal member of a tribe, a case of gigantism. Several large human bones have been unearthed at this site. Another article from the New York Times, written in 1897, reads, One of the three recently discovered mounds in this town has been opened. In it was found the skeleton of a man of gigantic size. The bones measured from head to foot over nine feet and were in a fair state of preservation. The skull was as large as a half bushel measure. Some finely tempered rods of copper and other relics were lying near the bones. The mound from which these relics were taken is 10 feet high and 30 feet long and varies from 6 to 8 feet in width. 
The two mounds of lesser size will be excavated soon. This article from the St. Paul Globe, written in 1904, states, Bones of a human skeleton 11 feet high are dug up in Nevada. Workmen engaged in digging gravel here today uncovered at a depth of about 12 feet a lot of bones, part of the skeleton of a gigantic human being. Dr. Samuels examined them and pronounced them to be the bones of a man who must have been nearly 11 feet in height. Apparently, these discoveries were something completely normal back in the day, and they weren't hidden from the public as they are today. The discoveries of giant skeletons weren't limited just to North America. This article talks of a giant's skeletons found in a cave in Mexico. The article reads, Charles C. Klepp, who was recently returned from Mexico, where he has been in charge of Thomas W. Lawson's mining interest, has called the attention of Professor Agassiz to a remarkable discovery made by him. He found in Mexico a cave containing some 200 skeletons of men, each above 8 feet in height. The cave was evidently the burial place of a race of giants who antedated the Aztecs. Mr. Clapp arranged the bones of one of these skeletons and found the total length to be 8 feet 11 inches. Other articles mention discoveries of giants in Europe. This article from 1892, written by the London Globe, tells of the discovery of a race of giants in modern-day France. It reads, in the year 1890, some human bones of enormous size, double the ordinary in fact, were found in the tumulus of Castelnau and have since been carefully examined by Professor Kyener, who, while admitting that the bones are those of a very tall race, nevertheless finds them abnormal in dimensions and apparently of morbid growth. They undoubtedly reopen the question of the giants of antiquity, but do not furnish evidence to decide it. You have no idea how many more newspaper articles we found. There were discoveries of giants all across the globe, and today, scientists and archaeologists pretend this never even happened. This article, titled When Giants Roamed Earth, talks about the historical discoveries of giants from the time of the Roman Empire to the 19th century. Here's what it reads. The past was more prolific in the production of giants than the present. In 1830, one of these giants, who was exhibited at Rouen, was 10 feet high, and the giant Galabra, brought from Arabia to Rome in the time of Claudius Caesar, was the same height. Phanum, who lived in the time of Eugene II, was 11 and one half feet in height. The Chevalier Scrog, in his journey to the peak Tenerife, found in one of the caverns of that mountain the head of a giant who had 60 teeth and who was not less than 15 feet high. The giant Faragus, slain by Orlando, the nephew of Charlemagne, according to reports, was 28 feet high. In 1814, near St. Gernat, was found the tomb of the giant Isolant, who was not less than 30 feet high. In 1590, near Rouen, was found a skeleton whose head held a bushel of corn and which was 19 feet in height. The giant Backert was 22 feet high. In 1623, near the castle in Dauphine, a tomb was found 30 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 8 feet high, on which were cut in gray stone the words, Cantolicus Rex. The skeleton was found entire and measured 25 and 1 fourth feet high, 10 feet across the shoulders, and 5 feet from breastbone to the back. But France is not the only country where giant skeletons have been unearthed. Near Palermo, Sicily, in 1516, was found the skeleton of a giant 30 feet high. Near Magrino, on the same island, in 1816, was found the skeleton of a giant of 30 feet, whose head was the size of a hog's head, and each tooth weighed 5 ounces. Although back in the days these discoveries were made public, once the discovered skeletons were brought to the respected museums and historical institutions, they completely disappeared and no one ever talked about them again. Here is a map of all reports of giants in North America. 
It's truly astonishing how many of them are there. Almost all of the discoveries end up in the Smithsonian Institute, and we all know how good they are at covering up major discoveries. There are also supposed reports of the Smithsonian purchasing giant skeletons excavated by citizens, which then disappeared, never to be heard from again. The Smithsonian even had a special division for exploring ancient mounds and supposed giant burial sites. One famous discovery of a giant which was also covered up by the Smithsonian is the San Diego Giant from 1895, which was an 8-foot, 4-inch tall mummified giant. There was even a picture of the giant mummy, which was shown in many newspapers. The mummy was inspected by many scientists. After his inspection, the San Diego Giant was purchased by the Smithsonian. Thirteen years later, in 1908, when the mummy was being exhibited, the Smithsonian ran some tests and suddenly dismissed it as a hoax, saying it was made from gelatin. The fact that it took that long, and after spending so much money to acquire it, plus the fact that it was carefully inspected by experts 13 years earlier, does suggest there may be more to this story than meets the eye. Is it just a coincidence that absolutely every culture and religion tells stories of ancient giants who roamed the earth? The Sumerian civilization, which was said to have begun in approximately 6000 BC, tells of a race of giants which ruled over the Sumerians, and there are many depictions of them. Sumerian records speak of a giant king by the name of Gilgamesh, who ruled for 126 years. He is generally seen by scholars as an actual historical figure, since inscriptions have been found which confirm the existence of other figures associated with him. In ancient Egypt, there are hundreds of depictions of giants, and the Egyptian records describe the old pharaoh dynasties to be a race of tall giants, and hundreds of giant sarcophaguses were also found, but the mummies there had been long looted this unusual story, with a headline, Prehistoric Egyptian Giants, was reported in multiple newspapers and reads. In 1881, when Professor Timmerman was engaged in exploring the ruins of an ancient temple of Isis on the banks of the Nile, 16 miles below Najar Jafard, he opened a row of tombs in which some prehistoric race of giants had been buried. The smallest skeleton out of some 60-odd which were examined during the time Timmerman was excavating at Najar Jafard, measured 7 feet and 8 inches in length, and the largest, 11 feet 1 inch. Memorial tablets were discovered in great numbers, but there was no record that even hinted that they were in the memory of men of extraordinary size. It is believed that the tombs date back to the year 1043 BC. According to the German newspaper, Bild, an entrepreneur named Gregor Spori took a number of photos of a mummified giant finger in 1988. The owner of the finger was a retired grave robber who found the finger in an undisclosed tomb. The finger is nearly 14 inches long and, if it is genuine, it belonged to someone estimated to have been between 15 and 16 feet tall. The owner of the finger had a certificate to say that the finger was authentic, together with an x-ray image. Later, when Spori returned to Egypt to purchase the finger, the owner had disappeared, leaving us only with the photographs of this discovery. The Book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament, tells us the story of an ancient giant race called the Nephilim. The story of the Nephilim giants is further elaborated in another ancient manuscript, the Book of Enoch. Apparently, the Watchers, who were fallen angels, interbred with the women on earth, and as a result, the Nephilim giants were born. We know that these ancient manuscripts describe the Great Deluge, a massive flood which, according to scientific data, really happened. If the biblical flood was real, could the Nephilim giants also be real? The stories about giants don't end there. Every Native American tribe tells of the times when giants used to rule North America. 
and there were brutal wars between the giants and the Native Americans. The tribes had to unite together against a group of red-haired cannibalistic giants and fought them to extinction. The existence of giants could certainly explain some of the massive megalithic structures around the world, which by now had no explanation of how they were moved. Like the Stone of the South at Baalbek, Lebanon, which weighs at a staggering 1,242 tons. On Mount Shoria in southern Siberia, researchers have found an absolutely massive wall of granite stones. Some of these gigantic granite stones are estimated to weigh more than 3,000 tons, more than double the weight of those in Lebanon. It's interesting to note that the original name for Stonehenge was the Giant's Dance or the Giant's Ring. Stonehenge is a later Saxon name that translates to the Hanging Stones. Giants are also part of the Celtic mythology, the Greek and Roman mythology, the Hindus, Buddhist, Norse, and even in the Japanese Shinto folklore. In fact, there's an amazing video from an old military parade in Imperial Japan in which the Japanese proudly show this huge giant and parade him alongside the Imperial soldiers. It's been said that this giant was the last member of a tribe of giants called Cha-Cha, who lived on an island with the name of Hahashima. There are many historical accounts of giants as well. Flavius Josephus, a first century Jewish scholar and historian wrote this, for which reason they removed their camp to Hebron and when they had taken it, they slew all the inhabitants. There were till then left the race of giants who had bodies so large and countenances so entirely different from other men that they were surprising to the sight and terrible to the hearing. The bones of these men are still shown to this very day, unlike to any credible relations of other men. During the 1500s, when the Spanish navigators were exploring the coast of the Americas, sightings of live giants were also sighted. Three captains of Spanish ships reported these taller than average native people on their expeditions to America, as well as Sir Francis Drake, Captain John Smith, and several other notable eyewitnesses. This is what Captain John Smith wrote about them. The Sasquasahanogs are a giant-like people. They measured the calf of the largest man's leg and found it three quarters of a yard about, and all the rest of his limbs were in proportion. In 1519, Spanish explorer Alonso Alvarez de Pineda was mapping the coastline of the Gulf Coast, marking the various rivers, bays, landmarks, and potential ports. Not far from where the river empties into the Gulf of Mexico, he found a large town and near it some 40 native villages. He described seeing many giants living in this village and curiously, a race of tiny pygmies was also living there. Pineda described the tribes that settled near the Mississippi River as a race of giants from 10 to 11 palms in height and a race of pygmies only five or six palms high. Perhaps the most intriguing and widely known tale of real giants in the Age of Exploration began with an account concerning none other than the great Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Between the years of 1519 and 1522, Magellan embarked on his most famous voyage, a bold expedition to search for a good route to the Maluku Islands of the East East Indies that would eventually result in the first successful circumnavigation of the globe. Magellan was given command of five vessels, and one leg of their voyage took them out across the vast ocean, all the way to the faraway land of Patagonia, at the southern end of South America. It was there that the expedition would come across a rather baffling sight indeed. Here's an excerpt from the diary of Magellan's official chronicler. Leaving that place, we finally reached 49 and one half degrees toward the Antarctic Pole. As it was winter, the ships entered a safe port to winter. We passed two months in that place without seeing anyone. One day, we suddenly saw a naked man of giant stature on the shore of the port, dancing, singing, and throwing dust on his head. 
the Captain General Magellan sent one of our men to the giant so that he might perform the same actions as a sign of peace. Having done that, the man led the giant to an islet into the presence of the Captain General. When the giant was in the Captain General's and our presence, he marveled greatly and made signs with one finger raised upward, believing that we had come from the sky. He was so tall that we reached only to his waist, and he was well proportioned. It is significant to note that the above narrative is taken from the journal of the official chronicler of Magellan's voyage of discovery. That is the one person above all others who is tasked with recording and keeping the most accurate records of events and activities, whether exotic or mundane. This person is not only responsible to the commander of the voyage, but also to king and country for his eyewitness accounts as a complete, precise, and accurate testimony of events that occurred during the voyage. Based on his position and responsibilities alone, his first-hand eyewitness testimony of encounters with giants must be taken as factual information by an unimpeachable witness. To do otherwise is to trivialize the importance of the chronicler's fundamental accountability. Years later, in 1539, there was also the account of Hernando de Soto, another explorer, who came face to face with numerous giants during his adventures through the southeast portion of what is now the United States. De Soto had set out from Tampa Bay, Florida with a contingent of hundreds of men, and during their trek, they allegedly frequently came across tribes of natives ruled by giants. One of these was a Chief Tuscaloosa, who was encountered in western Alabama and said to be a hulking giant of a man who towered over all others. There are also the reports from the Spanish conquistador and explorer Hernando de Alarcón, who was trying to find a river that could be used to move supplies to Spanish troops along the coasts of California and Mexico. Alarcón would eventually make his way up the Colorado River all the way up to the Grand Canyon, and during this journey, he and his men purportedly came across a tribe of around 200 giant warriors standing up to 10 feet tall. The giants were supposedly very aggressive, but Alarcón appeased them with gifts and other signs of peace. The conquistador Francisco Coronado also told of having come across whole tribes of giants during his quest throughout the Southwest in search of the legendary El Dorado. In some cases, there was physical evidence of these giants found, as was supposedly the case with the conquistador Bernal Diaz del Castillo, who served under Hernán Cortés during the Spanish conquest of Mexico. Within the pages of his detailed record of the conquest and subsequent collapse of the Aztec Empire, there is an odd account of a race of giants that were claimed by the Tlaxcatec Indians to have once inhabited the area. The chief of the tribe then provided the remains of these mysterious giants as evidence, of which Castillo would write, They said their ancestors had told them that very tall men and women with huge bones had once dwelt among them. But because they were very bad people with wicked customs, they had fought against them and killed them, and those of them who remained had died off. And to show us how big these giants had been, they brought us the leg bone of one, which was very thick, and the height of an ordinary sized man. And that was a leg bone from the hip to the knee. I measured myself against it, and it was as tall as I am, though I am of a reasonable height. They brought over pieces of bone of the same kind, but they were all rotten and eaten away by the soil. We were all astonished by the sight of these bones and felt certain there must have been giants in that land. There were so many reports of real giants being encountered throughout North and South America in the age of exploration, and such accounts have faded into history to be mostly forgotten. There are some things, however, that cannot be forgotten, as they are literally written in stone. That's the case of the giant footprint of South Africa. This is the most spectacular footprint in rock found anywhere on Earth to date. There are many others, however, like the giant footprint of Pinyan, but none are as fully formed and obvious as the one in South Africa. Discovered in 1931 by a farmer called Stoffel Ketzi while hunting, 
It has remained one of the most controversial sites in archaeology and geological research. The footprint is about 4 feet, or 1.3 meters in length, which suggests that the creature who left it would have been 24 to 27 feet, or 7 to 8 meters in height. The footprint is known to locals as the footprint of God, or Goliath's footprint, and stories of ancient giants are told all throughout the region. Skeptics reject the giant footprint, claiming it was formed by natural erosion. However, Professor Peter Wagoner from the University of Port Elizabeth in South Africa said that there is a higher probability of little green men arriving from space and licking it out with their tongues than being created by natural erosion. Judging by all the discoveries listed, together with all the historical accounts we mentioned, it may be possible that giants really existed. But could it be possible that somewhere, in some remote place, a species of these enigmatic beings is still alive, hiding from humanity? We can't end this video without mentioning the most famous giant encounter, which didn't happen in ancient times, but in 2002. This occurrence, which is still classified by the U.S. government, was disclosed in the popular radio show Coast to Coast after witnesses of the event came through and anonymously told their stories. The events allegedly happened in 2002 in the deserts of Afghanistan, where a U.S. Army squad went missing. A special ops task force was sent to find out what happened, and the soldiers walked along a rugged mountainous trail until arriving at the entrance of a large cave. Around the clearing of the cave, there were pieces of broken U.S. military equipment and scattered gear with traces of blood on them. The task force was about to enter the cave to search for the missing soldiers when a 13-foot-tall, red-headed, double-toothed humanoid emerged and attacked them. According to the witnesses, the giant pierced one of the soldiers with his long spear, killing him on the spot before the rest of the squad could take him down shooting at his face for 30 seconds straight. Once the giant was dead, the task force went inside the cave and found remains of human bones, leading the military to think that the creature was cannibalistic. When this shocking incident was reported to the headquarters, the body of the giant was packed and loaded into a helicopter and transferred to a secret location in the USA for study. The giant weighed about 500 kilograms estimated by the team who transported the body from the pickup location to the United States. The giant wore a canvas or animal hide to protect his feet, like some sort of moccasins. If there was a living giant hiding for so many years in the caves of Afghanistan without being discovered, we must assume that this giant must not be the only one living on this planet. Surely there must be others somewhere out there. This mysterious creature was caught on camera in the desert of Portugal a few years ago. Could it be another giant hiding from mankind? Thinking about all the classified discoveries out there, we should be lucky to know that billions of years ago, dinosaurs existed. If that was kept a secret, who would actually believe that creatures over 175 feet in height used to exist? And if we know for a fact that giant reptiles, giant birds, giant fish and giant plants used to exist on Earth? Is it so hard to believe that giant humanoids also existed and perhaps still do? We'll leave the answer to you and end this video with this amazing quote from Mark Twain stating, Truth is stranger than fiction, but it is because fiction is obliged to stick to possibilities. Truth isn't. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you're new, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss the amazing videos yet to come.